Welcome to the High Value Sales Show of Eversprint.com. I'm Malcolm Louie, the managing member of Eversprint, and today we're speaking with Daniel Blue, the owner of Quest Education, a company that teaches small business owners and individuals how to save money, pay off debt, protect assets, and receive funding for their business or personal expenses. Welcome to the call, Daniel. Hey, thanks, Malcolm, for uh, having me on. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak with you. Well, I'm uh, really looking forward to hearing your insights as well, Daniel. Daniel, you grew your company's revenue from 114000 in 2014 to $2 million in 2017, a 1,649% increase. And in 2018, you hit around $2 million. But before we get into how you grew your company so fast, can you briefly share what your company does beyond my quick intro? And maybe also discuss how your company differs from the competition? Yeah, so uh, our bread and butter um, is retirement accounts. So we educate the Americans on different options that they have um, with their retirement accounts. So what we have found over the years is a lot of financial advisors and banks, um, they aren't really giving people all of these. And there's other options that are out there that people are not aware of. So we're able to educate Americans on how they can look at their retirement accounts in a different way. And by doing that, we can solve problems. We can help them pay off debt. Um, we can help them get business funding. Um, we can help them save money for the future. We can help them have more options outside the stock market. So, you know, the big thing that separates us from the competition out there is you know, a lot of financial companies, they're just trying to sell you investments. They're just trying to sell you stocks. They're just trying to sell you mutual funds. They're just trying to sell you real estate. Um, we take an approach of let's find out what problems need to be solved. Is it debt? Is it funding? Is it you're tired of the stock market? You know, let's identify some problems that we can solve and then help solve those problems. All right, fantastic. Now, you grew your business uh, quite rapidly from $114,000 in 2014 to $2 million in 2017. Can you share what the three biggest drivers were of your sales growth? Yeah, so we're talking uh, pre-2014, pre-the uh, Inc. Or because uh, oh, our company between, would... uh, Your company between the years of 2014 till today, right? I mean, you, you literally started with... Uh, a little bit over a hundred thousand dollars of revenue um, back in 2014, and now you're at uh, you know two million. That's a pretty big increase. So, what were the three biggest drivers that drove your sales so fast? So, I, I think it's really just uh, getting focused. Number one, you know, um, it's really easy for a business to try to be good at a bunch of different things um, and kind of spread themselves out. Um, because, you know, as a business, you want to make money, right, to, to keep the doors open and grow. Um, but I think it's important that, uh, and this is just from trial and error for, for myself, you know, I, I'd rather be really, really, really good at a couple things than, you know, just good um, over, you know, a lot of different things. Um, so, you know, number one, focus, I think is real important. Uh, that's been helpful for us over the years. Um, number two, you know, having the right personnel. Um, I read a, a really good book um, about a year or so ago, Good to Great, you know, and they talked about, you know, the, the most successful companies in America over the last 50, 100 years and, you know, what were some of the common characteristics amongst their CEOs and executives and employees. Um, and one of the quotes that really stuck with me is when they talked about your your team, your employees, you know, you got to get the right people on the bus. Um, as businesses, you know, we all have goals and we, we know where we would like to go, but there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of uncharted territory. So sometimes we're driving that bus and we don't know exactly on the GPS where we're going. But if you can get the right people on the bus, then that's what matters. You know, you want to get the right people on the bus and you want to have those pick people sit in the right seats because everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. Um, so that's really important, right? Because we've got an operation side, we've got a marketing side, we've got a sales side, um, admin, customer service. So it's all real important that we're playing to our strengths and uh, working together as a team. Um, so that'd be number two. Um, number three would be sales. Um, you know, right now we've got about 1,200 customers, 1,200 customers that have a self-directed retirement account with us. And 
out of 1,200 customers, we've got about $80 million worth of, of, of monies um, that's spread out you know, o- over the customers. Some of my customers have 80,000 in a retirement account. Some of them have 500,000. Some of them have 20,000, right? But we're able to, to educate these customers and solve their problems over the phone. We generally don't see these people face-to-face. So these people are trusting us with their life savings over phone calls, over the phone, with never seeing us. So that means we have to show tons of value. That means we really have to sell good. And a lot of people make the mistake of selling and telling and talking a lot and always pitching the product. And I have found that, that you know, you really want to make sure that you're asking questions, you're letting the, the customer speak, you know, you're trying to fall, find some problems to solve, to present some solutions. Um, so we, we've got a process where, you know, we've got a sales floor. Um, we educate the, the customer from A to Z, um, helping them understand the options that are out there and providing a very good sales experience to get the customer what they need to accomplish their goal. So between having the focus, having the right personnel on, on the team, the right people on the bus, and, and really honing down our sales skills, um, I believe those are a couple of reasons why you know, we're in business today you know, and, and we've been able to do seven figures a, a year in revenue. So just to recap, uh, the three factors that you summarize again, and just make sure I'm on the same page, it's focus, the right people, and having the right sales skills. Correct. Okay. Now, uh, maybe we can dive a little bit deeper on that, but maybe before we dive deeper, I just want to clarify something. You talked about you having 1,200 customers, and they have uh, $80 million worth of assets. Now, uh, just so that I'm clear, um, that's the, the funds, assets that they have, but you're not directly managing them, right? Correct, because these are all self-directed retirement accounts. So some of my customers, they'll work with me. They'll move their $100,000 or $200,000 IRA from Fidelity where they're tired of the stock market, and they move it over with the, with us, and it's in a self-directed account, and they already have a piece of property that they want to buy or flip. They already know which asset or where they're going to invest their money. I also have some customers okay. of mine that start working with us that have no idea where they're going to invest their money. Now, our company doesn't sell investments. We don't manage their money, but we do have some third-party partners that we refer people to. So I've got someone that has an RIA, Registered Investment Advisory Firm, I can refer them to. So then that way the customer can have stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe the customer wants to do real estate. I've got a few mortgage brokers that I can refer them to so they can do real estate investments. So they have a lot of options over here with us. Okay, and so what you do, uh, purely is provide uh, education and, and advice. Yeah, and making sure that they're educated and knowing the different options that are out there. Then right. Okay. They can make, you know, an educated decision, an informed decision. Okay. Um, so let's dive a little bit deeper in the three drivers of your sales success. Uh, first one you said was focus and being really good at a couple things. Can you discuss what your company is really good at? What are, what are those two or three things that your company's fantastic at because of the focus? So the biggest thing is a lot of people, and this number will probably surprise you, only about 5% of people are aware of a self-directed retirement account. Most people that have a retirement account, they think that they can't touch that money. And if they think they can touch the money, then they think they're going to pay penalties and taxes. So they think that they're handcuffed to their money. Right? So we help them understand that is not the case for the most part. So the, the things that we're really good at, when I say we're focused, there's really three areas that we help people. Number one, we help them pay off debt. I help out a lot of customers of mine that, that owe credit card debt, term loans, lines of credit. And this, this debt, they're losing money because of the interest or their credit score is going down. So we teach them a retirement account that allows them to make money out of that account without paying the taxes and penalties so they can pay off their debt and not have to worry about that debt anymore and then not worry about losing penalties and taxes on their retirement account money. So number one, helping people pay off debt, showing them a better plan to do that. Number two, helping them get business funding. So a lot of people that are needing capital for their business they think that they only can work with the banks and financial companies to get lending, to get funding. 
they're not thinking about their retirement account. Because again, back to most people think that if they touch their retirement account, their IRA or 401k, they're gonna pay penalties and taxes. So we help them understand that, hey, you can use your retirement account in a different way. You can structure it to where you can use the, the money in that account to invest in your marketing, to invest in product, to invest in your employees, to invest in your building, to grow your business. You can do that. So paying off debt, helping them get business funding. And the third way is teaching them a retirement account that allows them to invest outside the stock market. Because Maybe they don't have debt they need to pay off. Or maybe they don't need business funding, but they've got their retirement account and they're tired of the stock market. They're tired of seeing their money go up and down and there's nothing tangible and they don't really have control over it. So maybe they'd rather have their retirement account dollars invested outside the stock market. Maybe they want to buy a piece of property. Maybe they want to do real estate. Maybe they want to invest in someone else's business or their own business. They can do that in certain retirement accounts that we can teach them. So paying off, right. paying off debt, getting business funding, or getting more options outside of the stock market are the three ways that we uh, provide value to people. Yeah, totally understand that. Uh, sometimes people ask uh, why I'm not invested in the stock market despite my background. Right? I, you know, I have over 20 years of hands-on experience with the stock market. And I just tell them, you know, I look at the returns and, you know, the returns I can potentially get from my own business are uh, can be significantly higher than the stock market. And it's under my control, right, as opposed to stock market investing Who knows what's going to happen, right, because bulk of the returns depend on uh, global macro factors. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's what uh, draws a lot of people to self-directed accounts, just the uh... – one of the things that we battle against and we're always going to battle it is uh, financial advisors. You know, the, our financial system, Wall Street, doesn't want people to know about self-directed accounts. They don't want people to move their money out of mutual funds, out of stocks, because that's less assets under management, less fees for them. So, uh, you know, that's why only 5% of people, you know, really know about a self-directed account because they're just not taught about it. They're not exposed to what a self-directed account is. Yeah. And at the same time, probably requires a little bit more work as opposed to people just kind of paying someone to take it all, take it, you know, take care of everything for them. Yeah, you, you definitely have to be able to think outside the box. Um, our company handles, you know, the paperwork and you know, setting up the 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 process and you know, just taking them by the hand to where this can be hands off. Um, you know, so it can be something that uh, doesn't require you know tons and tons of time. So just comes down to, again, finding out what the customer wants and what their need is and, you know, putting together a plan to, to fit those needs. Now, um, how do you go about uh, finding the right people and putting them in the right seats? you have a process for that? Yeah. So uh, I get data from companies that do seminars or real estate events or CPAs or people trying to start Amazon businesses or e-commerce businesses or you know, maybe it's someone that applied for business funding for their food truck or, you know, their construction business. Um, so, so I get data from these different companies. And from there, I take that data and I load it up on my sales floor. I load it up in my CRM. And uh, that's where we, uh, that's our bread and butter at that point. You know, we start smiling and dialing and, uh, you know, getting on the phone with people and, uh, and doing some fact finding, doing some probing. Um, finding some ways to show value so then that way we can uh, convert those people over and uh, help them set up a self-directed account with our help. Okay. Now, before when we were talking about the drivers of success, you talk about having the, the right person, the right personnel, the right people on the bus. Now, were you talking about uh, the employees Correct. in that regard or were you talking about, okay, so and what, what you just described now about what you shared with me about building your database and, and, uh, and having your team call, call them, this is more for uh, business generation, right? Correct. Yeah. So I've got a sales okay. floor. I've got uh, appointments that will schedule appointments for uh, our retirement account specialists. And then uh, my specialists will take, you know, the phone calls with uh, the customers and really dig deep um, to find out how we can help them. The customer. Okay. How do you go about finding the, your team, uh, building your team, your your uh, full-time employees? You know, um, I've been, been blessed. Uh, so I'm 29 years old. And I got involved in sales when I was 18. And uh, so I've always been on the phone selling. And uh, over the years, I've, I've ran sales floors and sales teams. And uh, I've been able to connect with, with people, some very solid people over the years where, uh, you know, I've had people, 
you know, essentially follow me where I go. And uh, I ended up um, with this company four years ago. I actually started as an employee. I actually started from the very bottom at this company. I started setting appointments um, and worked my way up. Um, but when I came over here, um, I was able to take some, some people that I've worked with over the years, people that, uh, you know, felt like they wanted to go to battle with me and, and I'd take those people any day to go to battle with. So it worked out really good. I didn't really think that, uh, the relationships I made in my early twenties would have been, um, you know, really helped me with my business later in life. Um, so it's been a combination of taking some of the people in my network and then really what's been helpful for us, Malcolm, is referrals. I've got about 17 employees right now, and um, I don't have tons of turnover. You know, a lot of my, uh, so we've been around four years. I've got tons of, of employees that have been here three, four years. And uh, a big reason is because of referrals. Um, you know, that, that's been very helpful for us in, in finding people that, uh, you know, fit our culture and, uh, you know, enjoy being on the phone and uh, enjoy being in the retirement account world. Right. Makes sense. And the third driver, you talk about sales skills, the ones that help you uh, get to the 1,200 customer level that you have now. Um, can you talk a little bit about your sales process? You, uh, begin, you, uh, st you shared a little bit of, about it already, building your initial database, and then you talked a little bit about loading into a CRM, and then your sales team uh, goes out and, and does their smiling and dialing. Can you talk a bit about your process, a little bit more about the process? Yeah. So the, the main thing is, uh, and, and this is something I try to teach and instill in, in the team, the sales team, it's a contact sport. You know, since we don't do anything face-to-face, -face, um, we have to do a whole lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So, you know, my appointment setters, they're required to dial, you know, at least 150 calls a day or have at least three hours talk time, one or the other. So, uh, you know, we, we really hone in on our metrics and the benchmarks that we require, you know, so it's a lot of smiling and dialing. It's a lot of emailing to, to get a hold of people, text messaging, you know, so then that way we can find different methods to communicate with people. Um, so my appointment setters, you know, they do a lot of the digging, right? They're calling, they're texting, they're emailing, they're getting the prospect on the phone. A lot of the times we don't know if the prospect has a retirement account. We don't know if we can help that person. So it takes some digging. So my appointment setters do the digging. And then when they find somebody that we can help, they'll get that person scheduled to talk to one of my retirement account specialists. And then uh, my retirement account specialist will have several phone calls with, with the, uh, the prospect and uh, explain the different self-directed retirement account options that are out there. At the at the same time, at the same time, trying to identify some some uh, some pain points, some places that they need help. Is it debt? Is it business funding? Do they want to have more options other than the stock market? You know, going down that road. And then um, once we uh, are able to create a win win relationship where we can create enough value to get that customer to want to move forward with us, then that customer will get on the phone with my processing team. And uh, I've got a processing team, a customer service team that helps with the rollover, that gets the account set up, that helps all, with all of the paperwork um, and takes the customers by the hand in getting everything set up from A to Z. Right. Okay. How long is the uh, rollover take? Saying? See, I have an idea. Uh, uh, Charles Schwab right now. How long does it take for me to you get know, things rolling? It, it depends because Charles Schwab, you know, might take two weeks to process the paperwork and release your funds. So it depends on how long Fidelity or Charles Schwab, what their internal pro procedure is. Is it 10 business days? Is it three weeks that they take to sit on paperwork and then release the funds? And then you still would need to fill out the paperwork to get it back to us so we can get the ball rolling. So between you getting the paperwork back to us and then waiting on the custodian, waiting on Charles Schwab, um, I always tell people it takes about a month. From the phone calls okay. with us to getting everything, you know, set up. Okay. And what are the fees like for setting up a self-directed account? Um, so there is an annual fee of about $395 per year. And okay. that's flat. It doesn't go up. doesn't go down. So most people are paying fees based off of uh, a percentage, you know, maybe 1% on assets, right? So the more money you have, the more fees you're going to pay. Um, our self-directed accounts, they are flat fees. So okay. an annual fee of $395.
Okay. And, and then uh, your revenue is not just coming from this annual fee then? Yeah. So we get revenue from the fees that we've set up over the years. Um, we get a re- reoccurring because a part of that 395 we get for doing the customer service. Um, because that yep. fee is going to the custodian. So I actually don't hold the money. Um, we use a couple yep. of custodians here in town where they actually have the uh, capability of holding money. Um, yep. That's really all the, these custodians can do. That's why I would never want to have a custodian because the government, they just set them up where they just hold your money and they can't really provide customer service or education. They just sit on your money like a bank and that's it. Um, yep. So that's where we're able to provide a whole lot of value to people. So we do get a, a, a portion of the um, annual fee of the, the $400 per year. Yep. And then uh, when customers have no idea where they want to invest their money, um, maybe they want to talk to some of my third party partners. So for example, you know, we've got some third parties that we work with, with that provide fixed investments that are not tied to the stock market. So I see my customers get seven, eight, nine percent fixed annual returns. Um, okay. And we'll get a, a marketing fee for referring uh, the, our customers over to the third party financial companies. Okay. Got it. So that's, that's how you make the bulk of your revenue then is when you uh, find solutions for your uh, customers and the solutions are executed by uh, various third parties. Yeah. And then there's a referral fee arrangement of some sort. Yep. Combination of the referral fees and then, uh, you know, the account fees. Right. Okay. Got it. Now, can you share a little bit about your uh, marketing in terms of, you know, you, you talk about building a list. Uh, and then when I fired up my spy tools to see what sort of online marketing that you guys are doing, um, it, it came up empty. Didn't, I didn't see any paid ads that you were running. And uh, from a, a SEO perspective, um, not a lot of uh, keywords that you were ranking for either. Yeah, so uh, this is something that uh, was a light bulb for me. Um, I was talking to you off camera. Um, you know, getting ranked on Inc. 5000 and, and being, you know, in a group of high caliber business owners, it was great and all, but it really kind of hit me in the head um, and just kind of really shook me when I realized, I'm like, man, our, our, our technology and this, this world we live in, you know, more and more attention is going on social media, it's going on the internet, it's going on the digital platforms. And here our company is having no digital presence. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's great. We've been able to build this company and get to where, you know, we're able to generate revenue and, and, you know, have employees and have customers um, without doing digital marketing, without having, you know, presence online. But there's that old saying, you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same results. And uh, I felt like we needed to make some, some changes. And if we didn't, we would get, uh, we'd be like those dinosaurs. We'd be extinct, right? So, you know, we're in the process of, uh, you know, getting some uh, some processes in place to be able to start doing some uh, some paid marketing, some keywords, things like that. Um, so, you know, as we're talking right now, you know, we're we're doing this first week of January 2019. You and I are chatting. Um, you know, we actually have some goals to start um, spending some money um, in the ad game. Um, here this month. Okay. Um, can you share what your marketing plans are for this year? Yeah. So we really want to make a, a, a big push on uh, social media, you know, like Facebook and, and LinkedIn. Um, so, okay. you know, our strategies are going to be, you know, finding the right audience, um, people that we know we can help, or at least we have a good chance of helping. Um, and then yep. having some good content um, that we can put in front of people to create value. Um, okay. finding a way to get that, that prospect on my sales floor. So then that way, you know, we can replicate the process that we have, you know, we've been going through forever, which is get them on the phone, show some value and take them from A to Z. Um, we just want to be able to start doing that on social media. And, and I know there's a way to generate leads online. We just, uh, are at the infancy stages of, of doing that. Right. Are you planning on uh, doing this in-house or outsourcing? Well, yeah, as of right now, um, we're doing it in-house. Um, I've got two people in that department, and we've been going uh, really, really hard. Um, you know, Q4 last year, really spending a lot of time building some landing pages, 
um, getting some, some video content in place. Um, so it all starts with me, man. Um, I actually never got in front of a camera. Um, I, I was just kind of used to being the, the, the CEO, the business owner where I didn't need to be in front of a camera. I didn't need to have social media. I didn't really need to do that. So, you know, being transparent, it's been a learning process for me. Um, you know, getting used to being in front of the camera, you know, learning how to articulate my words um, on video and, and doing social media. So I um, feel like we made some good progress. We got a nice content library, got a lot of content now. So now it's just time to execute. Right. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, for me, I prefer audio over video because it's easier right because video not only do you have to look good but uh you know for for us right if i need to edit the audio it's pretty easy pretty clean but boy editing video is a, a lot more work no, than, than, than editing audio. you're right i mean i'd rather just pick up the phone smile and dial and make it happen so yeah i'm used to that i've been doing that for 10 years so now i'm having to uh you know pivot and uh, do things a little bit differently but uh you know and I think that's really important for, you know, whoever's listening, listening to this, you got to get used to doing things that you're not comfortable with. Because I'll be honest, yep. I'm not very comfortable. It's not my most favorite thing in the world to do social media, to be engaged in groups, to post every day, to do videos. That's just not my most favorite thing to do. But, uh, yep. you know, you, in order to be successful, what I've learned from uh, people around me that are, you know, doing way better than me is, uh, you know, you, you got to be uncomfortable. You got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So trying to get yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I can assure you that the more you do it, the easier it gets. I mean, my first few episodes of my show were a lot more uh, rough and a little bit more difficult internally, internally more difficult to execute than, than uh, our conversation today after I've done 45 of them so far, right? Uh, you know, this one's a heck of a lot easier than the first one. Yeah, that's uh, I I can attest to that. You know, I I actually started laughing the other day. I was looking at my videos from June that I was doing in 2018. You know, six months ago, and then the videos I'm doing now, it uh, it feels a lot better for sure. Yeah, definitely. Can you share some of your uh, sales targets or customer growth targets for 2019? Yeah, my uh, so my whole goal. I'm definitely you know about uh, setting yearly goals. So we definitely have some of those. Um, you know, my big vision is if I have 1200 customers right now with about 80 million, then I really want to take this to a, a point where, Hey, let's get this to where we can have 5,000 customers. You know, that's the number I really have in my head. And I know going from 1200 to 5,000 is a big leap, but I really have this number in my head, 5,000, because, you know, I feel like if I can take it to 5,000, then there's no reason why the math doesn't remain the same. If I have 1,200 customers and these, these customers have 80 million, and if I can have 5,000 customers, then there's no reason why there shouldn't be your 400 million, you know, uh, that these yep. customers have. So that's the main thing for me. Um, I know it's going to take a few years to get to that point. So as far as this year, um, I just really want to get to a point where I can hone down and get our social media marketing, our digital marketing on point to start generating some, some business. Um, because I know we can keep buying leads the way we've been doing it, and we can keep doing what we've been doing. But if I can supplement that with generating leads on the internet using social media, then you know we should be able to hit our targets. And uh, you know for something like this year, uh, I'd love to be able to add you know 500 clients to uh, where I'm at right now. So I can get, you know, one step closer to, uh, you know, get at, uh, 5,000 clients. Yep. Makes sense. One step at a time, right? For sure. But you definitely have to, uh, it's really easy to just kind of set goals that are, uh, how do I say it? It's really easy to just kind of be lazy with your goals. Um, you know, that's one thing that, uh, you know, I've always been, um, I've always thought big. Um, I've always wanted to do big things. Um, but I've actually realized as I've hung out and I've been able to associate myself with people that are doing it way bigger than me, like for example, you know, my company does seven figures a year. Um, I've got people in my network, people I can get advice from, um, that are doing eight figures, 10 million, 20 million a year in their business. And I found out that a big common denominator with people that are super wealthy is they just think big, man. They think just 
crazy big. And, uh, you know, so it's real important that you set that bar really, really high because even if you fail, you know, I would rather get 50% of an unrealistic goal. Even if I don't hit the goal, you know, I know I'm going to do a whole lot better that way. Yep. Yeah. I totally hear you. Um, three last questions for you. First one, imagine someone is uh, cruising on the freeway, driving 70 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour, depending where you are, and they see your billboard for Quest Education. What's that billboard going to, going to say since they're going to be driving by it and they're only going to have a five-second, seven-second look at it? Um, I think it'd say it'd be a question first. Have a, do you have an IRA or 401k? Question mark. Then it would be, would you like to have your retirement account have options outside the stock market? Question mark. Do you have debt you want to pay off? Question mark. Do you need some business funding? Question mark. If so, give us a call. Or if so, look up Quest Education. Um, you know, it's, it's funny that you asked that question because that'd be the last money I'd, I would never spend money on a billboard, you know, like, <laughs> because then you, you can't, how do you track it? You know, how do you know how many people saw your billboard? How, do, how can you yeah. really look at that data? Um, you know, that's, that's one thing I've, I've tried to get really good at over the years is look you got to look at your data you know numbers don't lie yeah. yeah definitely uh yeah it sounds like you're gonna have to have like four or five billboards yeah. in a row to have that message not for just sure one. yeah you are you are right sir yep uh and then my two last questions for you who are your ideal customers and what's the best way for them to contact your team so my ideal customer is someone that has an existing ira or 401k so an existing retirement account and that person that has an existing retirement account wants to do one of three things. They either want to take their existing retirement account and have more options outside the, outside the stock market, number one. Number two, they want to pay off some debt or they'd like to hear out another plan to pay off their debt. Number three, they need business funding. They, they need some working capital for their food truck or their, their e-commerce business, or their real estate business or their restaurant. Where they can find us, um, www.yourquest.com, so Y-O-U-R-Q-U-E-S-T, so yourquest.com. And uh, you know, I chose that name because we help people in all different areas, right? So we help people that are just starting their business. They just literally set up their LLC, and they haven't even made money yet, and we'll, we'll, we'll show them how to accomplish some of their financial goals. Then we also help, help people that are savvy real estate investors or they've been in business for years and years and years. So everybody's at a different point in their quest. And uh, if people don't know about a self-directed retirement account, then I believe it's my duty to at least shed light on it so they at least know about it, they're aware, and then that way they can make a decision for themselves. Yeah, makes sense, definitely. And you're helping them uh, accomplish their goals, and and uh, it's a win-win for everybody. That's uh, that's what it's about, man. I uh, I take so as like I was telling you, um, you know, on the, I was telling you offline. Um, you know, I'm still on the phones. I'm still talking to customers. Um, I don't like I was telling you offline for this business to really grow. Um, eventually, I'm gonna have to you know kind of be less hands-on, but. I think I'm always going to stay on the phone, man. I, I really enjoy talking to customers, getting feedback, understanding what we're doing good at, what are some things that we need to improve because it's all about the customers. It's all about helping people. If you really can provide people both short-term and long-term solutions, um, that's, that's what it's about. If you can help enough people, um, eventually the money will come. Yeah, fully agree with you. Thanks for joining us today, Daniel and sharing how you accelerate your company's high-value sales. Hey, thank you for the time. Hopefully, uh, there's some people that listened to this that uh, felt they got some value out of this. That was, uh, that was my goal. I wanted to be able to speak to some people that hopefully can resonate with this and maybe take a good nugget or two away and, and come away with some value. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, one, uh, for me, one value is that there are options beyond my IRA that I have and 401k that I know many other people have who, you know, work for large companies, right? For sure. That's useful. And also hearing how you grew your business. That too is very helpful to me and I'm sure to others as well. So thank you for sharing. Hey, thank you for uh, having me on. However I can uh, help out. Love what you're doing. 
uh, here, here to support you and, and see you win. All right, awesome. We've been speaking with Daniel Blue, the owner of Quest Education, about his company's rapid growth. For interviews with other fast-growing, high-value sales companies, or to learn how we can accelerate your firm's high-value sales through automation, visit Eversprint.com.